All right. Uh, this time I decided I would actually check the name of the talk before I stood up here, so it would be less embarrassing. So, uh, welcome to The End is the Beginning with uh, Bia, Jonas, and Emma, whose last names I mostly cannot pronounce. So, thank you. Yes, we are going to share our experiences uh, with a case from Telia Sweden IT which is going agile uh, as a transition and a transformation. Um, we are not going to talk about scaling strategies in a context that spans over 300 systems, more than 1,500 coworkers involved, many vendors, and over multiple sites in Sweden and Europe and Asia. We're not going to talk about that, although that's really cool and we're doing some really interesting stuff that we think brings value. We're gonna focus on the change strategy. And um, my name is Beatrice Düring, and I work at Soft House Consulting, and uh, I work as an Agile coach, and I'm involved in supporting the IT Goes Agile initiative at Telia. Hörsjö nu? Åh, oh, herregud! Wow. Good! <laughs> yeah, my name is Emma Bjuvefors and I'm working as a manager for a team on Telia Sonora here in Gothenburg. Yeah. And my name is Jonas Ekonalli, working as an agile coach at Softhouse. Okay, so Jonas, would you like to talk a bit about how it's usually done with change? Yeah, I'm going to do that if you... Put it a little bit. Is better? Okay. Good. We're going to talk about something new, I would say. The end is the beginning. Uh, what would happen if we never would have been able to cross the horizon? I mean, in the past, in the eight, late 1400, we thought that there's going to be monsters, etc. if you're cr crossing the street, uh, crossing the ocean. And then we would have no clue what would have happened in the United States. There's a lot of inventions that we thought was impossible when we started off. But by daring going through the horizon, going up and down. Niklas, is it good? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, but... By daring to crossing the horizon, we can see that there is new things. When we went to the U.S. by Columbus, we realized that there's a lot of new things happening over there. And that was actually the beginning of something new. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the transformation. There's different ways to handle the transformation. Uh, the talk will not be explicitly regarding that, but you have to be aware of, if you're going with a bigger transformation, there is people that would love the transformation. There are people that would hate the transformation. And if you cannot face that reality, you're going to have big problems. There is this innovation curve that we're talking about, that is written now, updated 2003, I think it was, by Rogers, that you're going to see you have those people, innovators, that love the transformation. Hey, we are going to chase the transformation. You have early adapters, which you're going to try to convince to make the change happen. But you also have the laggers. Sorry about that. The laggers, those people that actually wouldn't like to go through a transformation at all. And you have to consider that within your company. If those are the guys you're going to try to convince to go agile and lean. We have something called the chasm. That is where you have to go through, which is approximately 16-17% of your employees to make something happen within the company. The statistic says if you convince those people to start moving in the right direction, in the transformation, then something will happen. Keep that in mind when we're talking about the transformation. 
Because there are so many meetings I've been at when we talk about, I'm an idea coach, I'm talking a lot about transformation. Where we are gathered around the table, a lot of skilled people. No one is stupid. I love the way you talked about people, that we do our best if we have the possibilities. Uh, but we start off with, hey, we're going at Jalin. Let's be brave. There is someone in, within the organization who so say, hey, let's go this direction. And everyone sitting around the table have their own ideas and thinking about, hey, we are agile already. This is nothing I took from a book. I have faced those several, several times. We have teams. What's the big thing? And another people ask, okay, when is finished? When is the transformation finished? If we're going to spend money in this, we need to know when it's finished. We need to know the time, the scope, the cost. I've been a project manager. I've done that, this within all my projects. And you have also those people that, hey, this will this affect me? Will it not affect me? And I, I can promise you that I, what I say all the people that I talk to within the transformation is, that's for sure. It's going to affect everyone. We had a YouTube talk from Jeff recently that talked about how he faced managers if they're going to get unemployed. By some reason, that was a big thing for him. But it's no. They will not get employed, but get new things to do. And there's a lot of people that are going to have that within an organization that is going through this change. And you have people that says that, hey, we can't start without a plan. Let's take up a plan big front. And my statement that I have faced People saying that, hey, this is not the daycare. We talked about people in uh, previous discussion. They have a work, they have a daily life. But do we consider that when we're going through a transformation? That is not everyone that do that. And all of those people are going to be affected of the transformation. And we have to be aware of that. Because Everything here that I stated, I did when I was a project manager. How comes that we are running an agile and lean transformation as a project? That's my big question. We say that, hey, we're going to change now. We're going to do the iterative work. We're going to do the program. But still, a transformation seems to be a project. And I don't know. Because if you look to Wikipedia, it's a project by definition, it's a settled scope, and you have a time frame, and it's during that period going to accomplish some, something already defined. Can you do that? Someone here that recognizes themselves, raise your hand. like that. Thank you. There are people who recognize themselves. Because if you look at the lean principles, that you're going to be faster to market, you're going to improve learning, you're going to have uh, respect for people. How can you set a time limit for that? I don't know. I ask the people that I've been bringing this change with, hey, how can we define when it's done? And then when we work in Agile and Lean, it's not done until it's done. Okay. Then we start in what, oh, then we need to measure this. Hey, hey, now we're back to the project again. What should we measure? Interesting. We can do it differently. Or, Bia, try to hand over to you here. Thank you. <laughs> um, so first of all, uh, in the IT Sweden Goes Agile, we are using a change strategy that is based on Bridges change model. 
which is called Managing the Transition. And he makes a distinction, Bridges makes a distinction between change that you can plan. Basically, it's situational, it's quite instrumental, uh, it's quite physical. Are we going to move the desk from there to there? Are we going to go to a new building or not? But when it comes to more complex environments and context, he talks about transition instead of change. Because transition is letting go of old behaviors and picking up new ones. And that is what we need to encourage in an environment where we want to have sustainable change. Now, Bridges talks about three main steps. And it's not phases, and it's not sequential in that sense, but these three steps talks about where he describes what people are going through when navigating that transition. So it's an individual perspective that you can also raise up to a team level. So I'm going to talk about these three steps, give you an understanding, and then we'll get into the Telia Sonra IT Sweden context. So first of all, Bridges talks about ending. So before, is this something waterfall project? Or no, it's not waterfall. Because then you destroy my intro. Then it was the wrong conference, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we're not talking about sequential uh, software development here. We're talking about stages of where a person is uh, when facing a change or a transformation and the transition that they are going through. An ending is when the per people ask themselves, what is going to end? It's when they orient themselves to what is going to be lost. How am I going to, am I going to lose something? Uh, are we going to still fill out this report? Uh, if we're going this way, are we still going to do, uh, are we going to have these forums or steering groups? Are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? People ask themselves ending questions. And, and that is actually be a, the start. Yes, so that speak. is the start. Yeah. The start is in Bridges model to answer these ending questions. Not in detail, but give an hope and an answer and acknowledge these fears and anxiety and give them a view of how it could be done. So people will have ending questions and we need to acknowledge that. Now, still from a general sense, they will enter another stage which is called the neutral zone. The neutral zone is when you are in the actual change. And uh, this is when the anxiety level raises quite a lot. Motivation can fall, but it can also be a very creative period because this is a period where you can experiment and have temporary structures. He uses the Moses metaphor. And I don't know if you remember the tale of Moses leaving um, Egypt. But actually what happened was that the Red Sea closed up behind them. They couldn't go back. And once you're in the neutral zone, you can never go back. You can only proceed. So you're there in the desert, the Sinai Desert, right? The ending is behind you. It's the Red Sea. It's closed up. And you start walking through the desert. Now, the Moses metaphor brings up uh, certain key aspects of the neutral zone that Bridges emphasizes. First of all, you need to magnify the plague. And you remember maybe the plagues of Egypt, you know, the swarms and the grasshoppers and the locusts and everything. The plagues of Egypt. We don't want to go back there. There are plagues over there. Even if we could swim, let's not go there, right? And this, of course, matches another uh, change strategy by a guy called Cotter. Has anyone heard of Cotter's change strategy? Yes? He talks, the first step in Cotter's change strategy is establish a sense of urgency. And this is Bridges' version. Magnify the plagues. But he also talks about marking the ending. Yes, this is it. We're go live now. We've taken the step. We can't go back. This is marking the ending. This is in front of us. That was behind. And we also need to acknowledge the loss and honor the past. So there were things back there that were really good. Now we're going in this direction. We'll see if we keep doing those. Let's experiment. He also talks about dealing with the murmuring. I don't know if you remember, but Moses had quite a hierarchical and authoritative leadership style in the desert. We're not promoting that. But he dealt with the murmuring. You know, this is not very good. Are we really going to go here? It was much better in Egypt. Although the locusts ate all the food. We still, you know, this is the desert. We, can, we don't have water. We don't have food. We don't have anything. He dealt with the murmuring. And how did he do that? Well, fortunately, another aspect that Bridges raises up to get sustainable change and deal with neutral zone, he talks about how you need to get access to top management. And Moses does that. He goes up on the mountain and talks to the top management and say, there's a lot of murmuring going on. Can we clarify some issues here? They're idolizing 
things down there and melting gold and creating these, you know, idolatry things. Can you help me out, top management, please? And that's something that Bridges emphasizes, that you need to have access to management people. It needs to be a two-way dialogue, right? And that step shouldn't be so far. So he came down. He didn't come down with a 200-pager way of working handbook, right? With process descriptions. He came down with 10 principles, 10 commandments. Some of them are weird, but in their context, they probably made some sense. And then they started experimenting. And when they had problems, management interfered. We have no food. There was manna from heaven, right? You know, ah. And um, it was a 40-year journey. I'm not saying that your transition should take 40 years. But the Moses metaphor is critical when it comes to understanding what do you need to do when it comes to helping people that are in the neutral zone. You need to remove obstacles. You need to clear out the path forward. You need to accept temporary structures and emphasize that this is actually a very creative period where we can do continuous improvements because there, no, there is no right way to do it. We're in the desert now. We need to survive. Let's experiment what that means. That's neutral zone, right? At a certain point in time, we never know when. We can never plan when the new beginning happens. That's when you've transitioned into the new behaviors. We can encourage the new beginning. We can um, support that it happens, but we can never sit here and plan, well, roughly at this point in time, X amounts of people will have gone through the chasm that Jonas talked about, and uh, they will have, at the 12th of December, entered the new beginning. No, you cannot plan change from that perspective, because this is a transition. But when the new beginning appears, that's when people engage on a different level. And they, they see how they fit in the overall outcome. They understand the purpose. And you can, again, on a deeper level, deal with what was previously ending questions, but are rather new beginning, because they are immersed in the new beginning. This is the Bridges model, and I'd like to show you, if you click to the yeah. next one. Because here we can actually reference to the crossing the horizon. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. We don't know what's going to happen there, but no. it's going to move. It's going to move in that direction. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So this is how we applied Bridges at Telia Sonora IT Sweden. And uh, so, um, first of all, there's quite a lot of people in Telia Sonora Sweden IT. And quite a lot of them are sitting on the vendor side. So, but we don't really care about that. We view people as people. Whether they are under a different organizational number, we don't really care. So a big part of this is vendor interaction models that we created in order how to set up an agile collaboration uh, within delivery areas. So what you can see is that the, dotted, the lines here is the team queue. It's teams queuing up to go into the change model. And here are the teams that are in ending right now that we help and coach as agile coaches and managers to answer their ending questions. And then, there, of course, there's an overall Telia Sweden IT that we help with their ending questions. But we're putting extra emphasis on the teams that are very close to going agile and try to answer their ending questions and make sure that they have what they need, certain agile preconditions to be able to start their desert walk if you can use that expression. And so, then comes a point when we enter the neutral zone. And this is something where we've established practices for. So the first thing that a team does in neutral zone is that they get an onboarding iteration with active coaching help. So we're crossing the Red Sea and during a two or three week iteration together with a team and coaching help, we start walking in the desert. We set up the roles, the team themselves set up the roles. They decide their iteration length and how their working agreement is going to work. And they do that together with uh, agile coaches. And the emphasis, of course, is that they start to iteratively go into continuous improvement within their delivery team area and do what is, of course, the core of agile, where it's inbuilt. We can train on doing the do agile part, get to learn how to walk and survive in the desert and actually be creative and see what we can get out of that. At the same time, we are, of course, helping other teams to reach this point. So we use something that we call transition criteria to tell us. And we've established those transition criteria together with the, the would-be Agile teams that we are, have started so far. So we did that just before summer. There are 13 preconditions that state very clearly, well, managers, if you want 
this company to go towards an agile and lean way of working to support an overall transformation, this is what you sign up to. You sign up to making sure that people are more fat allocated. It's not something the team can fix themselves. Another part here is, of course, we need to have some sort of queue owner or product owner connected from the business. If we have that, do we have a queue, a work that is deliverables, that has value to someone? Do we have that? And is that a result of active requirement collaboration between the team and the business, not just something that someone wrote up and figured out on, the no on themselves? These are 13 different criteria that we work with during ending and during neutral zone to basically go from red to yellow to green. And then the team themselves decide when are we mature, when is this stable enough? When is this normal state stable enough? After several experiments, and believe me, they are experimenting quite widely, <laughs> they decide themselves that now, now we're probably in as steady, robust state as can be. We're gonna continue our journey. We're in new beginning. Right now our teams are in neutral zone. We've talked a bit about that maybe the neutral zone will take between three to six months. We've seen some really cool signs already, but as Jonas' curve showed, we need to make sure that everyone actually gets their own transition in the teams so that they understand what am I leaving behind and what am I getting myself into and what are the new behaviors that I'm signing up and, and, and adopting. So there's a lean aspect to this as well, because being an agile coach at Telia Sweden uh, IT, I'm a bit spoiled, because there is a lean, ongoing lean transformation also. So there is actually a deviation support structure. So on Mondays, the teams, whether they are in ending or in neutral zone, they have basically blocker deviation meetings, and they can signal there. That means that it goes up to a certain management level on Monday afternoon, on Tuesday, it can go up to the next management level, and no later than Wednesday are we up in the top Swedish management level if there are deviations that blocks the teams. And this is, of course, for the entire company and, and, and aspects of the operations that is not within an agile way of working. But being an agile coach, helping teams on this journey, it helps a lot to have a deviation structure and, and a lean perspective on, on things. Also, what we are encouraging is that on the team level, we go through continuous improvement, which is inbuilt in Lean and also in Agile, which is the Kaizen level, small team level improvements. But this is a very complex environment, so there are many things that blocks many teams. That's why we also have a radical change, which is, of course, the Kaikaku, uh, as it's called in Lean, the radical change, that is transforming how the IT Sweden is collaborating together with the different business stakeholders. That is about how they collaborate with inside of the organization. All those things are on a strategic level. The teams can't solve that. So the change team, which is the Kaikeku team, is the ones that on a strategic level handle ongoing improvements that blocks teams in neutral zone. But we don't have the full picture. We are exploring and discovering the journey as we go along. But it helps to have this hybrid of lean together with the bridges with an agile transformation um, strategy. Now I'd like to invite uh, Emma Bjuvefors, who is going to be the voice of the customer, uh, and talk a bit about how you feel that what you're experiencing right now compared to how you usually handle change. Yeah, uh, we already seen a lot of effects, but for me to explain some of the effects for you, I want to describe what we usually did. So at first, we didn't have any clear vision and clear goal that was aligned all the way to the organization. Uh, of course, we had vision and we had goals, but they tend to differ in different areas of the organization. Also, we do what a lot of companies do. Uh, we like to have this big, nice plan up front that tells us how to do everything. And that, of course, doesn't work, because while we are working on the plan, the surroundings are changing. So, not working. Also, we have a lack of communication. We do communicate, but often we do this in some kind of big bang event. And after that, it's quite uh, quiet. So if you weren't there to hear about this big bang, then you haven't heard it. And you probably won't either. Uh, and then how do we work with the change? Uh, top down is uh, expected. No, back. Uh, top down is expected from everyone 
both managers as well as employees. And this is a huge problem because that means everybody sits and waits for instructions on what to do, but also detailed instructions on how to do the change. And that either doesn't kind of take, it, it would help. It sounds like a project to me. Yeah. But you've done it before as a project, now you try yeah. something different. Of course. Mm -hmm. And this is what we usually did. So what's the change now? What do we do now? At first, we, ha we have uh, embraced our vision and we have embraced our goals. And those are communicated and aligned all the way from top management. And this is not Sweden, this is Telia Sonora's top management and all the way down through the organization. And we work with these on a continuous basis. So if you haven't heard them, you will hear about them because we talk about this all the time. Uh, we also have uh, value words that we use in all of our communication. So you, you can't miss what our vision are, you can't miss what our goal are. Uh, also, this big, nice plan that we had, uh, we have came to realize that it won't work. The market is constantly changing. So now we talk about a foggy road instead, because we know that the goal is steady. We know what the vision are, but the road to reach this, it's, it's quite foggy. It's like when you drive your car and you came into fog, you, you, you know where you're heading, but you don't see all the way to. So sometimes the fog is uh, thick and then you only have steer sight. Maybe you know what to do for a couple of weeks, couple of months, uh, and then it's, like, it's slower. But then it comes a period where you have a thin fog and you can speed up, you can plan, you can try out new things. And that's what we do. And also this communication plan. It's still hard with communication. But now we communicate that we know what we know right now. And we know that the goal is still steady, but we, we, we can't say how this agile journey will turn out. Everyone, everyone has to help us with that. And that comes to how we work now. Uh, we work all the way through the organization in an iterative and more collaborative way. So everyone has to help and there will not be this top management that tells us this is how you should do it. Everyone has to, to help in this. So we try out new things. We, yeah, we work with our goals. And we know that there will be some speed bumps, but we probably will survive. Um, also, if, if I will have this talk to my organization today, then probably a lot of people will sign off on this and say, yeah, we, we see this, this is ex exactly how it is. But also, there will be a lot of people that says, no, I can't see this, I don't feel this, because we are under transition. So a lot of people are in the start of the curve, they don't feel this, but a lot of people have reached this state. See? You accept it or? We have to accept it because ah. the old way didn't work. Really? <laughs> so now at least we have a better way to do it yeah. and yeah. it seems to be working. Yeah. That's a little bit what we started off with, that some people will not be at the same spot as everyone else or so. And you have to accept that. And we, had a, we were sitting down having a discussion, okay, now when we face so many people, what can give our takeaways for this talk? And what we would like you to bring back home is the following. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, we call it the triple dare. Um, and um, so uh, let's see if we can give you something to take away. First of all, dare to end. Usually when we talk about change, Managers as well as people who are early adopters or really fast on the change or transition, they are already there. They're in the new beginning, right? And when they get bogged down with questions regarding, should we still do this? Should we fill out that? How should I handle this? What should I say to that person X when they phone me and ask about this? We need to dare to end. And we need to dare to let it take time. We need to acknowledge that if people are going to leave something behind and move and pick up new behaviors, we need to acknowledge and help them to mark that ending and help them to orient themselves. Even though, as Emma says, 
it is a foggy road, so we can't give them the 200-page process description. They probably wouldn't read it anyway, right? But we need to dare to end. We need to acknowledge. And an aspect of dare to end is what Emma was also talking about, is that when some people have ended and they're in neutral zone, there will be coming new people that are having their ending questions. And then new people and new people, like ripples in the water, right? Yeah. And, and that is, we need to allow them their ending as well. So first of all, we need to dare to end. Yeah. And secondly, or at first, I have to say, these dare are actually one of our value words. So I'm very happy that we have it here because yeah. this is what we want to send to all of the organization that we have to dare to do things. And uh, we have to dare to experiment. And that is both for managers as well as employees, because as manager, you have to share and encourage all the employees to dare and try out new things, because otherwise we will never, never find a new way of doing things. So that's... And that was also something that we discussed very early on, is that should we reorganize the entire organization to fit an agile, lean way of working? And we des you decided to not do that, right? Yeah. And actually, even if we would have said that we should reorganize, how we would we do it? Because we don't know how we would look in a year, and we can't reorganize. So we need no. to experiment, and we yeah. need to gather empirical feedback on where do we put value in the transition. We don't know that. It's a foggy road, right? Yep. So we need to dare to experiment. Very good. Yeah, uh, do you want to comment on the last <coughs> one? Yeah, we, we also need to dare continuously. And ask our employees, that everyone in, within the company ask, do you dare to do this? Because if you ask someone, are you brave enough as you started off to make the transformation? I think everyone say yes, no problem at all. But how do you then live up to that? Ask and continuously dare to questionize things. Keep those three in mind. Yeah, yeah, and there continuously is, of course, we have it easy, though, because it's not a nasty change in some sense, right? No. Agile is quite cool. I mean, it is about creating a better working environment, so yeah. it is not that difficult in some sense. It will be difficult for quite some people, but it's not that hard actually to do. But they're continuously about the continuous improvements. It's yeah. about the retrospectives yeah. and that you're never done. And there might come a next step when the agile and lean transformation has entered a certain stage, when we have to make a larger change, a new kaikaku, then yeah. everyone's in ending again. And yeah. then we start off again, iteratively. Yeah. And something when talking about these things, it's not that you have five people brave enough to be in the front to do all these. Uh, this would affect the whole organization. Yeah. It's not only one people that think, hey, this is the way forward. I can do this. I sign up. Everyone has to sign up. Yeah. So that was our triple dares. And that was a talk about embracing the change, which is, of course, is the change strategy level. Uh, and how to do that more consciously instead of just, oh, let's go agile and see what happens. Yeah, There is a change strategy, there are people involved and we need to deal with that and we need to make sure to support them in their transition. Thank you. And maybe Thank you should also mention before they uh, uh, go that we're looking forward for the open space. Because yeah. if you have lots of more questions regarding yeah. the things we didn't talk about or the things we did talk about, then open space tomorrow, okay? Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. For Thanks for your attention. Thank you. I uh, think we probably have a minute for... Oh, oh, easy. I think we uh, probably have a little minute or two for questions. Oh, la. <laughs> okay, the, <clears throat> I hear that uh, we started with uh, the teams on the team level. Uh, what about the uh, product management, the product ownership, the... Uh, Yep. Uh, how, how, how comfortable do they feel, et, et cetera? How, how do you deal with that? It's a good question. So uh, are we ignoring product management? Uh, first question is, of course, is there a product management in Telia Sonra? Yes, it is. It's outside of the IT organization. Yeah. Um, you maybe want to mention a bit on... Do you want to comment a bit on the product management? How we I think it? our organization is actually too big to <laughs> dig into right now on how it looks, but it is outside IT. And we are, this change is, of course, affecting them as well. And we work in the same way with project management um, as for everybody else in the organization. 
they they are they are having the same curve. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, it's one of the transition criteria is that we cannot enter neutral zone without having someone who owns the queue and can sort it in order of importance. Uh, and we call it the queue because we want to be method agnostic, right? So, but yes, in this, we could call it the product backlog and the product owner, right? So we can't do that without having them. So our course already here, there are ripples in the water in the organization that uh, with, we especially work with one of the segments, uh, which is the consumer segment. And, and they've given us product owners and they've been very happy to get a fixed capacity. Wow, and participate in requirement conversations and estimation sessions. Oh my God, is it that big? What, I thought it was a couple of days. So yes, the, there, this is IT Sweden goes agile, but there are ripples in the water that touches other part of, not, well, formally, most Telia Sweden, I would say. Yeah, we have actually talked about that, that we should probably rename it now to Sweden goes agile yeah. because it's so much bigger than IT. Yeah, it's starting to become truly cross-functional on, on, a, on a country level. Yeah. yeah, good question. Any other questions that you'd like to ask? Uh, where did the change originate from? And uh, did you have to persuade any people higher up in the company in order to go with the change too? Where did the change originate from? Moses? No. <laughs> 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 do you want me to comment on that one? Yeah, you can probably do that. Yeah, I, I don't really know where it started. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, one of the good things with uh, complexity theory and systems thinking is that we talk about emergence. So the fact that we can't even say that, it, yes, it was uh, a top management decision at that and that board meeting and such and such, there was a decision, um, which was, of course, the uh, Sweden uh, IT manager who said, this is taking too long. He saw some initiatives, but he basically said, uh, before 31st of December 2015, I'd like to see some critical mass of agile way of working. So he said that, but I would say, uh, having worked with Telia Sonora IT uh, or Sweden for quite some time, I can see seeds that we sowed 2012. Yeah. That's when I talked to Emma for the first time in the previous organization and other people involved. And after two reorganizations, we've come together again. And all the people who were part of that previous tryout, which was a program called Boost within the broadband part, they started to basically emerge and experiment. And now there is a change strategy overall again, but it was seed sown at that point in time, I would say, in combination with clear vision and goals. And the new Sweden manager is very clear on breaking yeah. down the silos. You may want to come and actually that. before we had all these delivery teams, but in also in different areas and not aligned in any way. So we have also worked a lot with that to, to catch what they are doing and create a bigger structure than theirs. So yes, there are, to answer your question, there are some formal decisions. There was a previous journey that started 2012 already. Some parts of the company started even before that, but they were isolated. But now we see uh, not just emergence, but convergence. That's why it's very difficult to say who initiated it. Yeah. And I will but also say that this is also uh, a we have a lot of happy enthusiasts that are running this change as well. And yeah, I would say that we haven't came this far without them. Definitely champions. And we have, well, everyone has to be aware of When I started this 10 years ago, there was like a big no-no. But now in Sweden, it's becoming popular with this transformation. Or a lot of companies yeah. like to do it. Yeah. So yeah. it gives the possibilities of something completely new. Do we have... Uh, Time for one more question? I think we have about a minute and a half, yeah. Yeah, another question? Okay, I'll see you in open space tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.